Super League coach Graham Murray joins the panel as we discuss his future. Where did the Wallabies go wrong? Sam Scott Young discusses their woes. More Tandoori news with Mahatma Coat. The latest on AFL with the cat from Geelong, Sam Newman. And Sheryl takes it to the streets. Welcome to our State of Origin footy show special tonight. They said they couldn't do it, but the Queenslanders did it 3-0, and I think the sign at the back of the studio says it all. Well done, Queensland. Let's hear it for the boys. Now, we've been chasing New South Wales players and officials to try and get some comment on why they lost the series they should have won. Well, nobody wants to talk about it, but... Nurse Payne and doctors Fennick and Walters have managed to revive one blue from Suncorp Stadium on Monday night. And like 17 <laughs> New South Wales players on Monday night, poor old Cocky's looking a bit worse for wears. All right, let's get into the panel. And first up at the bar is Shirley Strawn. Good evening, Shirl. Ah, uh, hi, Bomber. How are you, mate? Um, you want to look after the Cocky there, mate? Oh, mate, I can keep an eye on this nurse, don't worry. Reminds no, me no. of on the road. <laughs> Women in uniform is a great song. I just like... <laughs> <laughs> hey, mate, we've got a message for the French. We've done our gesture towards the, the nuclear tests. They're going to come back into the Pacific. Notice there's no Maui. On the shelf, mate, I've removed it. So that's my gesture. There he is, the environmentally friendly Shirley Strawn. Well, Dr Walters, what about the knee injury? Coming along slowly. I've had some more tests this afternoon and um, get some results back tomorrow, so I hope we should know a bit more then. All right, Dr Mario Finnick, you've taken the coat off. What about uh, the shoulder? Are you ready for Saturday? Yes, I'm making my comeback finally after about six weeks off, so I'm looking forward to that. Also joining us tonight is Rugby League Week editor in Queensland in Tony Durkin. And Durko, you have a scoop, I have presume. Scoop. Yep. There it is. Well, the, the Australian team, as you know, is going to be announced on uh, Sunday night. And the captain of the Australian team, my mail is, folks, will be Manly's Jeff Toovey. Oh. We will be talking more on the Australian Test team a little later in the program. Gary Belcher, the Reverend, joins us. You too have something to say about the Test selection. Yeah, uh, as with all Queenslanders, I was just thrilled by the, the way the Maroons did it. Um, fantastic effort by all of them, but um, I'm just disappointed by the ARLs. Uh, all you can call it is stalling tactics. Why didn't they name the side straight after the, the game, as they always have? Uh, they're just stalling. I think they're just going to drip, drip feed to us what they, the team is going to be, and it's going to be full of New South Welshmen, and it's I mean, I'm just dis disgusted with what they do they're doing. But does that surprise you, Badge? No. Like, you, well, we've played for many, many years, and it's the same sort of thing. Well, I, I played in a couple of couple of series in a row in 88, 89. We won three 0 and um, at the end of the 88 series, we all struggled. See, whether you like or not, the well. power base is in New South Wales, and and you know, the, a lot of Queenslanders deserve to get picked, but uh, they probably won't. Yeah, the Footy Show panel has come up with its criteria and its team, so we'll have a look at that a little later on. And of course, another of the burning issues in rugby league this week is uh, the crushes. And uh, their uh, plight, will they stay with the ARL? Will they go to Super League? Mario, we're going to put you in the spotlight again. Well, What's uh, the latest? Come on. Happened. Nothing's really changed from, uh, from last week. Uh, they've, they met with Super League and uh, they made sure that Super League really put, put it down in black and white so they understood the deal. They have to make a business decision and uh, they'll make it shortly. When did, they meet, tomorrow. when did they meet with Super League? Today. Isn't there another meeting tomorrow as well with John Rebo and Ken Cowley? Well, as far as I know now, I spoke to Daryl today and he said that he, they laid it out on the table today and uh, I think the, the Crushers board will sit tomorrow and uh, hopefully nut out a decision one way or another. But well, obviously the man who holds the, holds the power is, is the chairman, Tossa Turner. Tossa Turner and Daryl Vanderbilt, as I said last week, you know, Daryl is the heart and soul of the Crushers and I know Daryl believes uh, in the ARL and it'll, I think they'll go ARL. Th those guys have plenty at stake uh, personally as well, Bomber. And, you know, I, I just think... If the ARL don't get the crushers on board, it could be the end of them. Yeah, we said that last week, didn't we? Desperate. All right. Oh, also, we? hot off the presses tonight is the fact that uh, Queensland prop Tony Hearn has been suspended for eight matches. Okay. 
Uh, it was a headbutt. Well, it was a headbutt. It was, uh, and it wasn't. I mean, that's the type of thing in my, uh, as far as I'm concerned, that went out of the game ten years ago. Here it is. Here now, Tony Hearn, folks, believe it or not, pleaded not guilty. He said he was trying to push Mark Carroll away with his head. Well, he did that pretty successfully, but Mark Carroll came back. I suppose, I suppose the thing that's going to that's going to really knock everybody in Queensland is that the player who he per, per, um, headbutted, <laughs> Mark Carroll, was a player who got away with a one-week suspension for something that he did, which uh, I, I won't say was worse because I don't think there's anything worse in the game than a Liverpool kick. I, uh, I managed to speak to Tony Hearn straight after the game and he told me that he was just annoyed. Uh, Carroll was talking to him in scrums as he does in yeah, games he and he was yeah. baiting him and he lost it. Well, that act of frustration is going to cost uh, Tony Hearn eight matches. He won't be back until after round 19, so he'll have three weeks ready to get, for, get uh, into the swing of the finals uh, if, in fact, the Bears are there. All right, enough on that. Let's welcome in one of uh, the real stars of the Queensland origin side for 1995, and that, of course, is Mark Hone and his mate Max. <laughs> Now, Haney, I know you and Max are great mates, but uh, I have to say, how proud are you to be uh, holding that uh, TUI State of Origin shield up and bringing it here with us uh, tonight to show us? Oh, extremely, mate. It's, you know, it's a wonderful feeling. Uh, you know, there's three tags on this, the three badges on this shield, and so I've played three series, and it's the first one that reads you know, three block to Queensland. And, uh, you know, it was a wonderful experience. It's uh, at the game there on Monday night. It was the um, most uh, passionate I think I've seen in the crowd. You know, the atmosphere was just unbelievable, and we had a... Uh, well, we just had the best night, really. Honey, I read in the paper through the week, um, you won two grand finals with the Broncos, and you put, certainly put this state of origin win right up there with those. Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. It was, um, it was sensational. I think, I think the fact that we were under so much uh, pressure from the beginning of the, when the team was picked, you know, we weren't expected to do that well. And uh, the, the spirit just sort of uh, multiplied as the, as, the, as the games went on. You know, we were all very focused, and we... Um, you know, we just all on the same wavelength, and it just you know when everyone's so so tuned to, to achieving the, the result that we got, you know, it's just a wonderful experience. How's Max's involvement in this? All come around. <laughs> 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 well, he, didn't, he didn't have much. To, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have much to do with the state of origin success, but he's, as you can see, he's gone out and crushed his colours, so he's hoping for a first away victory this weekend. Only plenty of raps for Fatty and Gilly. They they just seem to me to be really the heart and soul of the team. But can they, do they deserve a lot of the credit? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah Gilly's inspirational. There's just nothing another way you can describe him. You know, he's just a, a great player to, to play with and a great bloke. And I think you know it was his experience and uh, you know depth of knowledge that really enabled the young blokes to perform as well as they did. And um, I think also the same with with Paul Vorton. You know, he was just sensational. He was, um, you know, his humour sort of lightened the situation when there could have been too much pressure and stress and. You know, I think people have, you know, are starting to realise as well that he, you know, not just he's not just, uh, you know, a funny fella. He's a, you know, quite a, you know, good reader of the game. His tactics were spot on. The way he planned our sessions leading up to the matches was, you know, really impressive. And you know, when we got to game day, we were ready to play, which is, you know, what it's all about. Honey, we discussed uh, all the games in, in our club in our meetings uh, with Channel Nine, and Gary Beltram myself really sort of analysed your game. And I felt that you made a real a great impact and a lot of your work went unnoticed where you, you really carted the ball forward and your uh, rotation with Gavin Allen I thought was really important to the success of Queensland. Uh, yeah, well thanks Mario. Um, you know, Fatty, uh, he was you know, pretty strong on, on the job that he wanted the front rowers to do. You know, he said that the front rowers, uh, in, in past origin successes, the front rowers always gone well and he thought that you know, if we could use uh, the three front rowers we had as, as in rotation and come out on top of the, uh, of, the, of the New South Wales guys, you know, we'd be in with a big chance. And, you know, he really pushed us along on that all the time, and we were always focused to do our job, you know. Um, you certainly did that, Honey. Thanks, mate. Honey, without yeah. being disrespectful, you know Spring Chicken, you've been through the ropes of rugby league for a long, long time, but talk to a lot of the players, and Chris Close, who is one of the most experienced right, right back from the start, he said that first meeting that the players had when you went into camp on the very first day was just the meeting that got everybody together. Can you just touch on what actually went on in that meeting, or is it a... Is it top secret? No, it's not top secret. Um, you know, I, I think the, the real things that came out of the meeting, that it's, without putting it in, in word for word, is, it was just the, um, the, you know, the, the way that Fatty and Chris Close especially you know, felt about it. 
about the State of Origin Series. You know, Fatty showed us an old, a game which he played in with, where Queensland won. They uh, kept the New South Wales trials for the second half. And, you know, he just he focused us in on what it was all about playing for Queensland. And that was just, you know, really being prepared, you know, to do whatever it take to win the game. And, you know, there's a couple of things that uh, came out of it as well. You know, I think, you know, young Ben Eichen got picked in the team and the story's probably been told, but he's, you know, his father apparently said to him, well, you know, you've got your body and heart and everything is now owned by Queensland. And whatever Paul Vorton tells you to do, you do. And you know, and um, you know that was the way that the attitude that sort of went through the camp. Now you, you guys could have been happy with a two-nil series victory and, and just sort of cruise through the last game. You were obviously motivated. What, what were those factors for the last one back at Lang Park? Well, I think there's a couple. I think the, I think the major one was that we didn't want to um, come to come and play a game in Queensland after having won the two and lose at home. It was that was one of the ones. The other thing I think which was up the boys' nose a little bit was the fact that New South Wales. Having lost the two games, uh, were still considering themselves unlucky. You know, they, they, they were still could, the favourites too, weren't they? That's right. You know, all they could say was that you know we you know we had unfair decisions and you shouldn't have won and all the excuses. And I think we just sort of thought, well, you know, if we do come up here and get beaten, it's two one. Well, then they, you know, maybe this, they can justify it. But you know, if we get them three zero, well, then you know nothing can be said, and we've just been the better team for the series. Yeah. Well, Mark, we've run out of time. We'd love to uh, chat uh, state of origin and the success for a long, long time. But uh, on behalf of all of Queensland, our audience here tonight, uh, congratulations to all you guys for a great job, and good luck to all the Queenslanders in the naming of that test side on Sunday. Well done, Mark. Thanks very much. Another of our segments here on the Footy Show is Footy Faces, uh, where if you think you look like a footy person, it is Gary like Belcher. Belcher. I don't yes. think oh, And there's B. Donald of Bouval. Oh. And the second one is Glenn Lazarus. He's our famous footy face. And this oh, is uh, Ben Head, head of Boona. That's head. a very young brick. He is a young brick. Right? Head. Brick head. It's a paver. <laughs> it's a little paver, it is too. That one looks nothing like me. <laughs> Actually, if he shaved his moustache off, he'd probably look a bit like Tom Cruise. Our, uh, <laughs> and the winner this week is uh, B-Head, I presume it is. Yeah. Is that and for Box? <laughs> he wins a pair of uh, Riders jeans and a chambray shirt, uh, compliments of Riders. And, of course, if you've got a famous footy face that you'd like to uh, send to us, send it here to uh, Footy Faces Competition, GPA Box 72, Brisbane, Queensland 9009. Time now for our Qantas Play of the Week. By entering the Qantas Play of the Week, you could win a trip to Sydney to view a game of your choice up till the end of August. All you have to do is vote for one of the following plays. Play A, Tim Brasher, New South Wales. The pass through Tooby and Johns to McGregor. McGregor, no, here's a try. Brasher. Play B, Rod Wishart, New South Wales. Across and then it's Tooby combining now with Fittler and now it's Brasher. Look for his second. Oh, the pass. It's out for Wishart. It's play on and Wishart. He goes around and scores. Play C, Danny Moore, Queensland. Outside him, Hone is there, Smith is there, Ben Coyne. Now, Danny Moore, Danny Moore, he's in, he's in for another Queensland try. Play D, Brett Dallas, Queensland. Plays the ball and now it's with Jason Smith and he runs into a yawning gap. Oh, shot the gate, Dallas is away, look at him go. Play E, Ben Eichen, Queensland. Goes high again, more work for Matt Sears. Point, he's made the mistake. Eichen, Eichen, he'll score. The youngster, he goes in to score. His first... Cast your vote now. For play A, Tim Brasher, phone 0055 60281. For play B, Rod Wishart, 60282. For play C, Danny Moore, 60283. For play D, Brett Dallas, 60284. And for play E, Ben Eichen, 60285. Towards the end of the show, we'll announce the most voted play of the week and select a home viewer to win the Qantas Supporters Package. I'm a betting mug, but I reckon a Queensland try is going to win this week. We'll take a break on the footy show. Coming up soon is Fanny Vorton as Nurse Payne tries to revive the poor old cocky. Still to come, Exilarora coach are now at Super League Graham Murray and Cheryl gets your say off the street on the footy show. <laughs> well, 
Welcome back to the footy show. He was the man who took a bunch of so-called no-names and turned them into uh, state-of-origin heroes. I speak of none other than Fanny Vorton. Please welcome him from Sydney. Hi, boys. Fatty, they're bowing to you as the uh, new super coach, I think. Fatty, how does that sit with you? Oh, no, not really. It's just it was a great team effort, you know, by all concerned, from the managers right through to the, uh, our last reserve. It was a wonderful experience for all of us. Fatty, Badge here, how are you? Go, Badge. I want to talk about Gilly because I think he's, um, well, what he did epitomise the Queensland spirit throughout the whole series. But I know that the doctors and, and the medical staff didn't want him to play only hours before the match. What convinced him? I think I, think I helped him a bit there. He was, uh, he was told by Dr Roy Saunders that he faced uh, possible septicemia if the infection went through his body. I could see him, he didn't want to make up his mind, Gilly, and I, so I just I one on one with him and I said, Trevor, what do you want to do? And he still wouldn't answer me. I said, well, you want to play, don't you? He said, yeah, I do. And I just, I thought about myself, I put myself in his position. I said, well, Gilly, if I was in your position, I'd be playing. And he said, that's all I wanted to hear. And, and so he played and the, man, uh, the man's a hero. I mean. Uh, if he hadn't have played for us, if he hadn't have led the way for us as captain and got on the paddock, I don't think we would have won the game. And uh, the bloke has shown a lot of courage, uh, more than he had to. But the, the simple fact is that uh, he looked around and saw this Queensland teammates needed him and he went out there and did the job for us. He's a, he's a legend. Fatty, it's Mario. In the first game there where you, you, you beat him in Sydney, the combination of the side was questioned. You couldn't get out of the trial line. But what I felt was as the team was getting... Uh, more, more together. You've seen in the last game you scored some great tries. Well, that's right. That's, that's the way it went. Uh, you know, we had 17 players new to each other and a new coach. We had to sort of ease into it. And by the third game, uh, you know, we really put some combinations together, scored some very good tries, um, and uh, they played very well. And we'd like, to, we'd like to make it a best of seven series next year, see if they can win a game. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Rollers here, mate. Congratulations on the great effort. Thanks, Kev. If you look back over the three games, can you see one single incident in either of those games that really turned the corner for Queensland and brought home the bacon, I suppose? Yeah, well, I, there's a couple that stand out. Probably, um, remember in the second game in Melbourne where Matt Singh caught the ball on the end goal and got out. He was you know, pressured with some defenders and he got out and um, into the, out over the try line and got into the field of play. That was a sensational play by him. And he came up with some great plays, holding up Steve Menzies a couple of times. Uh, he was an unsung hero for us, Matt Singh. And uh, probably th that day in Melbourne was the one that uh, stays fresh in my mind. Fatty, on a lighter note, uh, they're labelling you as the coach who put fun back into rugby league. We've got some uh, great clips here, some great shots of one P. Vorton on the sidelines. How did you adapt to being a coach, having played uh, the game yourself and then uh, being uh, put on the sidelines? Some great reactions. Yeah, well, I mean, it's just me. I, I, I can't. I, I see a lot of coaches sitting there and just um, non-committal, and, and I can't do that. I've just got to get in with the boys and pretend I'm out there with them and, and produce all the actions, you know. And whenever we scored a try, I was up on my feet and cheering and clapping. And if we had one scored against us, I was looking for a place to hide. That's how I am, and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the experience of the whole thing. It's, uh, I think it's made better people of all of us, and uh, Queenslanders should all be very proud of their players. Fatty, what do you do now, though, mate? I mean, I remember you telling me about this time last year that if the right offer came along to coach a club side, you'd jump in feet first. But has, has your appetite been whetted and you've, you've had enough, do you reckon? Well, I've got a very secure job here with Channel 9. It's a job that I love. I mean, it, it beats working. And, you know, <laughs> it's just uh, a good opportunity for me to stay in, in the media. Um, I love the coaching, but for three weeks or five weeks, it was terrific. And that sort of has whetted my appetite and and sort of curbed it a little bit, but I, I couldn't imagine, I could imagine doing it for 40 weeks, it'd be hell. Uh, being mother and father to, to blokes like that for 40 weeks would be uh, not much fun. But in the, in the end, in a couple of years, if um, I might grow tired of this, I might lose my job, then it's, it's an option for me. I'd, it'd be exciting. But uh, at the moment, if I was to get the job next season, if they were to ask me, I'd accept, uh, that'd be great. Fatty, before the, season, before the series started, Wayne Bennett was quoted in the paper up here as saying that if they didn't pick Super League players, Queensland would get beat by 30 and the series would fail. When you look back over the, the three games, I believe, obviously I'm looking from an ARL point of view, that the series was a, was a real success. 
Murray, it was a, an outstanding success. Um, players and people in life in general are always looking for opportunities. Now, the Super Leaguers weren't picked. That's just a plain, simple fact. That's the way it was going to be once the division came into our competition. But we had 17 hey, brands. Sorry? In three years' time, Kevin Walters was part of the series. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Sorry? Nothing? <laughs> yeah, anyway. So three, I'll be name dropping in three years' time. 3 0 whitewashed the Queen. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah, good, Kev. One of your best. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, but we had 17 players looking for opportunity. They took it. And, I mean, they're the new Queensland heroes. And um, the Super Leaguers can go and play their own comp and please themselves, really. Fatty, we've run out of time. I'd like to ask you one last question on behalf of the panel. Uh, given you were the coach of Queensland, how many Queenslanders should be in that test oh. team that's announced on Sunday night? Well, I've got nine. I've picked my side. I've got nine Queenslanders in it, including uh, five of our forwards. Uh, Tony Hearn, of course, has been suspended, so he's the only one I've had to leave out. But I would have Larson in the front row. I'd have uh, Gilmeister and uh, uh, Jason Smith in the second row and Billy Moore at lock. And Wayne Bartram has got to be the hooker. i also throw in Robbie A. Davis, Brett Dallas, uh, Mark Coyne in the actual starting team. So they've got to be there. I just hope that the Queensland selectors go into this meeting on Sunday night very strong because these players, they've done the job for Queensland, they'll do it for Australia if picked. And um, selectors go in strong, get in the, get in the starts they deserve. Well, we're all behind you, Fatty, and uh, we're hoping that the Queensland selectors will do exactly that. Thanks for joining us on the footy show. Good luck next year, and we vote for you for the case for uh, 1996 as well. Anytime. Thanks very much. See you. <laughs> Continuing the state of origin flavour, and it's time for Street Beat with Sherl. And Sherl, are you in pain <coughs> over there, mate? <coughs> no, not yet, mate. Working on it, working on it. Oh, Street Beat, yeah. Um, yeah, just a little lower. Uh, actually, went out on the streets to uh, find out what Brisbane thought of the big game and to get their vibe on how big Monday night was. <laughs> Excuse me, madam. You look like a Queenslander. I am. Monday night, State of Origin. How proud were you oh, to be a Queenslander? Oh, fantastic. It was excellent. They really... It was a hat-trick, wasn't it? Have you got a special message you'd like to send to the team? Um, just that Gilmeister should play for Australia. Excuse me, girls. You two having a bit of a yammy, are you? We're trying to dodge you. We're trying to dodge you. Hey, what about Monday night, Queenslander? How proud were you to be a Queenslander at that State oh, of Origin win, eh? Oh, boy, was it great. <laughs> excellent match. Excellent? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, who are you bargaining for? Who? Queensland, oh. of course. God. So how proud were you? Proudest of you. Oh, you were proud. Anyway. He's high, weren't you? That high, mate. Yeah? Best. Hello, buddy. How are you? Good. What about the big win on Monday night? It was a great game. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Did you watch on telly? Yeah. New South Wales lost. Brilliant. Brilliant game. Did you Brilliant. go? No, I watched it on TV. Yeah? Who are you rooting for? Queensland. Oh, I shouldn't think so. 3 <laughs> nil. Where'd he go, Fatty? Well done, Fatty. We love you. Did you watch the State of Origin on Monday night? I certainly did. What did you reckon of the game? Magnificent. Queensland? Obviously you root for Queensland. I don't root for them, but I uh, support them. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty disappointing. What? Pretty disappointing. Oh, have a guess where he comes from. New South Wales. <laughs> yep. What about Gilly as the captain? Yeah, very good. Yeah, what about Benny Eichen? He's last, that last try, just before yeah, the closing minutes ago. Yeah, best, best one. That was good. What about the headbutt? Oh, we don't want to talk about that. Cut that. No, the headbutt was great. Oh, was it? Oh, we'll talk about it. Should have gave him another one. <laughs> Good on you, Freddy! Good on you, Queensland won 3 0. Woo! Come on. Mate, what do you think of Queensland's win? Bloody great. Bloody no great. Time. Hey, yeah. did you go to the game? No, but I watched it. Yeah? How big was it? It was excellent. Hey, um, just a matter of interest. Yeah? Do you always wander around with your fly open like that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Observative there, Cheryl. Very observative. Uh -oh. yeah. Hey, uh, excuse me. Uh, we might just have to go somewhere. She's putting on the rubber glove. <laughs> <laughs> Mind your own business. Now, to uh, help us celebrate the State of Origin win, our good friends at Emu have given us another four State of Origin packs, and they've got they include the playing shorts, the polo shirt, the replica jersey, spray jackets, child shorts and jersey, and a team poster valued at over four hundred and seventy dollars. Phone this number for our uh, viewers at home, 0055 60227. Four callers will be selected at random and we'll get in touch with you tomorrow. We'll take a break here on the footy show. Coming up is Graham Murray. Stay with us.
Still to come, more incense nonsense with Mahatma. And what went wrong with the Wallabies? Sam Scott Young explains. <laughs> She's supposed to be reviving the uh, cockroach, but I think she's putting his last rights. Mate, the way she's sitting, I've just got to ask her, do you treat cane toads? <laughs> <laughs> On the footy show, we've got to get back to our PG rating. It's time now to catch up uh, with former Illawarra coach and Graham Murray. Please make him welcome. Well, Graham. We know you're now linked with the Super League. What exactly are you doing now that you've cut ties or ties have been severed with the Steelers? Um, basically, I'm a bit more of a consultancy role, but uh, I coordinate uh, coaches' meetings, and we've had two of those so far that have uh, been very successful in terms of um, you know, the input that they can have and we can have as, uh, in running the Super League parts of, of uh, how, how we think it should be run. And um, also player representation from each club. I coordinate with them. Um, uh, basically, just any any job they want me to do, I'll do. Graeme, you were you were sacked for, by by the Illawarra club for getting Illawarra players virtually to sign with Super League. Were you guilty of that? No, I wasn't guilty of that. I did. Um, I was guilty of organising the meeting for to hear Super League's point of view, but uh, I was accused of using inducements to uh, sign the players, and I never did that. Now the club uh, ever since has virtually gone backwards. They've you know they've had a very very poor season. Uh, did that have something to do with it, do you believe? And, and do you feel, feel, for, the, feel for the players that, that you've left? I certainly do. And, uh, you know, I feel, uh, you know, in some ways hurt and upset that they are playing as badly as they are in some ways. But, you know, having, you know, they, they've got to get on with it. I've got on with my life. It's with Super League now. And um, they've just got to get on and, and play the football they used to play. Do you think the Illawarra were too hasty? I'm certain they were too hasty to go around. <laughs> but that's, uh, you know, it was only two days after the event that they sacked me, and I don't think they took everything into account. Um, you know, certainly didn't ask any of the players what I did and what I didn't do. Uh, they read out a statement to me what I did do, and I said, well, look, I'll tell you what I did, but uh, most of it I didn't, but unfortunately they, they didn't see it that way. Gra Graham, you were there for a number of years. Obviously, you'd be close to your, your players. I know the players had a big rap on you. Have many of them contacted you or talked to you since about, you know, you're leaving and, and what you're going to do in the future? Well, I'd say I speak to most of the players nearly every week. You know, I live very close to the ground and, I, you know, Meg McGregor drove past me the day after State of Origin and pulled up and we had a chat and, you know, I mentioned to him he, it's probably his best game he's played in the three games and I still talk to all of them over the phone and, and I don't have a problem going to the club either and, I, in fact, I had a beer with Bob Millwood last uh, Friday night. So I don't really have a problem there. Mm. Uh, and as you say, I was pretty close to most of the players. And I think, you know, Wayne Bennett actually said to me just after the incident, he said, look, your players haven't physically gone out on strike, but mentally they have. Because they have still got a very strong side on paper, the Steelers. The Broncos meet them this Sunday at ANZ Stadium. And looking at their side on paper, it's still very strong and could quite easily cause an upset. So as you say, it might be the mind thing that's getting wrong with them, eh? It is. And on, on, in fairness too, they've had a lot of serious injuries and a couple of suspensions that has affected them to a lot of their players. So, in fairness, that the injury thing has come up, but I think they're going to beat one of the top sides very soon. Back on, on Graham Murray, do you think you're going to have a coaching job next year, 96? Well, they've told me I'll have a coaching job next year. And, um, have you got any idea where or who? Or? Well, there's only two franchises that haven't got coaches at the moment, and that's uh, the Newcastle one, which probably looks the ideal one, uh, which I'll be speaking to them not this weekend but the weekend after, and the 10th franchise, wherever that happens to be. Mm. What about the, the Cowboys? There was some, in fact, Gary Belcher dropped it on the show last week that, that maybe you were going there, but John Quayle went a step further last, uh, last Friday and, in fact, accused the Super League of undermining Grant Bell and, in fact, named you as the, as the coach that was going up there. Well, I was, the only the two people I've spoken to from the Cowboys is uh, Rabbi Crame, who's the uh, chief executive at the moment. That was Super League Matters. And the only other one I've spoken to is Grant Bell. And he didn't offer me his job. So is it no? <laughs> You're not going there? No, I'm not going to the Cowboys. Graeme, you've gone from obviously a high-pressure job coaching a first-grade rugby league team. You've got plenty of time on your hands. What have you been doing with the time you've got? Yeah, well, four days a week I go to, uh, to Sydney. Uh, it's a bit different, getting on the train each morning uh, for an hour and a half and getting to Sydney to, to do it. Uh, Wednesdays is, I'm involved with the Illawarra Police football side, 
and that keeps me handy in a catching. They have had... Um, handy for other aspects too. <laughs> <laughs> they're, uh, I won't go into the fringe benefits, but uh, you know, there's a lot of good gear that we've got through, the, through, the, uh, through our sponsorship of our clothing. And, but that's one thing that's keeping my handy with coaching. And I, I appreciate the Illawarra football, uh, the police football. So. How are they going? Well, we, we started off real good and they were very keen early and we won three out of four, but we've lost three in a row. So um, <laughs> the assistant coach is gunning for me. <laughs> Graham, we've heard from the players. We've, of course, we've got Kevy on our, on our panel, so he's convinced that, that Super League, from a player's point of view, is the way to go. From a coach's point of view, what's the, what's the attraction? Well, I was devastated and upset and disappointed and all those things when Illawarra sacked me. But when I look back on it now, I think to myself, maybe, maybe they've done me a bit of a favour in terms of the way I think football will end up. It'll end up Super League. I'm at the grassroots. I'm there helping start this new game that, you know, that we're going to play in the Super League. And I'm, I couldn't be happier with my involvement. We'll end our chat with Graham there. Graham, if you'll stay with us for the rest of the show, we'll uh, get your tips and a few thoughts on uh, a couple of the games that are coming up uh, over the weekend. We'll take a, uh, a lighter break here on the uh, footy show and go to Mahatma Coat. I'm Mahatma Coat for National Now News. Hit it, boys. For me and Phil Gundapa. Looking beautiful tonight. Not too bloody loud. Making headlines this week, and Fatty Wharton's Mighty Maroons made it 3-0 at Sunburn Stadium as they defeated Gus Mercurio's Blues. What a catch! What a coach! What a legend! The great Fatty Wharton! What a great coach! Thousands flocked to the aftermatch celebrations, which were marred by some of my relatives who tried to gate-crash the barbecue. There's a barbecue going, and look at this. Oh, what a stupid place to try and park. All of my family are in the back of that car. Uncle Zipak Makot, Uncle Landu Makot, that is him there with the turban on. They were so upset. Unbelievable. What an... I am very, very sorry about this whole thing. All I can say, that was ramshed house driving. And in front of a packed house at the Sydney Football Stadium, Gus Mercurio Goldie put his players through some tough training techniques in preparation for next year's Origin Series. Players were learned to toughen up and were how to deal with such things as spear tackles and even how to spin out of them. This player here we see going through some tough treatment and what a very, very good effort that was by Jim Sadaris. Well done, Jim. <laughs> Gould was intent on ramming it home to his players. He was ramming at home, all right. He's saying, you must win. You must tackle next time. Don't drop the ball. You must win. You must win. Unbelievable scenes. I'm telling you what, what an, you and I are going to still have to put our heads together next year if we are going to make it another 3 0 And whilst fatty fever continues around the world, Everyone is wearing the red helmets. Look at this red hair, the Gundapas. Don't they look good? Everyone is wearing them. News is even spreading to South Africa, even into the Rugby World Cup, where people over there are dressing like the red-headed Marvel. Superman, yes, he is a Superman. Look at their outfits. What a wonderful, wonderful scene. Well, what a week it has been in sport. Congratulations, Queensland. Congratulations, Fatty Wharton. And Matt McCott, thank you very, very much. That's the week in sport. I'm Ahmad Makot for National Non News. Thank you, Mahatma, and with you in the Maroons' corner, we will have uh, success over a number of years. Well, on Sunday, the Broncos face Illawarra, as Kevy mentioned a little earlier, at ANZ Stadium. Uh, highlights on national, uh, on Wide World of Sport at 4.55 on Saturday. I was going to say national, 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 national Night news. news. While I'm going to say that, I might as well say that Kevy and Badge will have, uh, Kevy will have a preview tomorrow, and Badge, you'll have a review on Monday. But the game is on, on Sunday, highlights at 4.55. And uh, is this a danger game, fellas, do you think, Kevin? Well, it certainly is. You know, we've, uh, last game we played, last start we were convincingly beaten by Manny, so we'll be looking to, to have a good start against the Steelers. We played them early on in the season and that was a tight game, so looking forward to it. A couple of changes to the side, Kevin, with um, maybe Steve Renoff back. Well, yeah, chance. he trained well at training again tonight and, you know, at this stage I think they'll make a decision on Saturday morning about him. He looks well and he's running very fast and he's 
it's great to see Steve back training. Um, myself is out, so that won't leave too many holes. Um, <laughs> apart from that, um, <laughs> Brett yeah. Gailey is, is back up, and, and Shane Webke coming in on the bench. Yeah, Shane's getting his player. first start in, in first grade, and I'm, I'm sure we've seen a bit of him over the last few weeks in reserve grade. Good player. Now, Very good player. The news from Illawarra tonight is that Paul McGregor will play. Uh, supposedly had a, a stress fracture of the foot, but uh, he, is, he is right. But Keith Beecham has been ruled out. Jonathan Britton on the wing. I don't think that will make much of a change. But Neil Pincinelli's back. Graham, he's been out for quite some time, Pincinelli, and of course John Simon, so they should add to the, to the Illawarra side, even though maybe short of a run. Yeah, they will be both, although Pincinelli's just a natural athlete and he'll go the 80 minutes, a bit like Johnson did against the Crushers when his first game back. Pincinelli will handle but, no problems. Yeah, Simon might be a problem. John Simon at 5'8", Glenn Eyre, who's been fantastic, hasn't he, the last few weeks, he's obviously switched... He's forced the hand of the coach, hasn't he, to, to play Simon at 5-8? Yeah, he's played particularly well, Glenn, and, uh, and Johnny's leaving at the end of the year to go to Eastern Suburbs, yeah. so maybe Glenn's got the an inside running there. I know for a fact that one thing that can lift these, these sides that you know, are struggling a little bit is uh, playing the Manly's, the Canberra's and the Brisbane's and the Crushers. <laughs> oh, <you're> shocking, <laughs> on that note, we're going to move along on the footy show. I don't want you and Mario to get into another verbal battle here. The footy show Brecky is coming up very, very shortly. Saturday, the 24th of June at KFC Strathpine between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. That's on the 24th. The footy show Brecky at KFC, and I look forward to that. Stick with us. Rugby coming up next with Sam Scott Young. Still to come, the cat from Geelong, Sam Newman, and your chance to win a kangaroo wardrobe on The Footy Show. Pain looking after the copy. <laughs> we continue on the footy show if we can get our thoughts together and stop thinking about ailments. Um, time now to talk rugby union and uh, please welcome Sam Scott Young. <laughs> Sam, bye bye Australia. Oh, it's a shocker. Actually, Bomber, I, um, I couldn't walk in tonight because out of my tips for the last two weeks, I basically lost the set of my pants. <laughs> I've had a shocker. I've had a shocker. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, Australia out of the World Cup. Uh, I think um, last Thursday there were 200 Australians who travelled to South Africa to follow the semi finals and, and grand finals. And I, sorry, guys, enjoy your trip. Is, right. it, is it the changing of the guard, Sam? Is it, is it time for some, some of the team members to move on? Or? I think that's a, uh, a very controversial thing at the moment. And I think it is. I think it's time that. Uh, I guess uh, Bob Dwyer became accountable, uh, going from first to eighth in a matter of the last World Cup, and uh, I call for uh, John Connolly to stand for uh, Australian coach. But Bob Dwyer's got a great record. It, are you saying that he, he hasn't really contributed that much over the years, or What's why, why would he why would he have to leave after what ten years there? Over the years, eight, Gary, um, the, no, it's been ten years. Ten. Over the years, the, <laughs> the Australian rugby team has been very much self-administered by guys like uh, like Nick Farr Jones for instance whereas Bob would come in and I can say this first hand because I was there only a couple of times <laughs> he would he would come in and talk about a way he wants to play a backline move or a back row move and uh, Nick would say no when he walked away we're going to do it this way because it's the best way we're on there for the 80 minutes we're the team we know how to change our our plan of attack and that's what Australia has been like. Sam, against the Poms, though, we, they got beat, but there wasn't much in it, was there? were a couple of silly errors. That's what cost them. There wasn't, Mario. It was, it was a very close game. And as you can see here, Michael, unfortunately, knocked the ball on because of this flat line attack, and uh, England just capitalised on it. Unfortunately, Damien Smith just got there in time, but uh, couldn't put Underwood into the sideline. Gee, didn't he score a sensational try, though, oh, Damien Smith? Great try. Here it is. There's, they put the ball up. Michael put the ball up, and uh, 
Here goes Smithy. Look at this. One of the best just... high catches you'd ever see. Oh, unbelievable. Sam Newman would be proud of him. Oh. Fatty Vaught would be struggling pulling that one off, wouldn't he? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Sam Newman would love that. That's a great effort. But that was all, though, wasn't it? I mean, let's face it, that was all. All we had then was a kickathon. Well, there we go. David Camp is trying to put the ball over, but. Uh... Well, do, we, do we have the wrong tactics oh, in no. the game, Sam? Look at this, guys. This, this is not a bad drop goal under pressure, is this it? This is where it happened. Must be heartbreaking for the guys that are sitting there watching it go over, knowing that they've come so close. You know? Oh, it's, it's terrible, but I mean. You know, full credit to this guy, Rob Andrews. I mean, what a great kick. Well, I read something about Australia's kicking tactics, Sam, that they, some of the players were disappointed that's what they adopted. But would you say that they went with the wrong tactic? I think in a game of rugby, you must be flexible to your opposition. Um, we weren't winning good line-out ball. So why kick the ball out? But seeing the line out, Sam, like I'm not a net rugby union expert, but there was a I've big tall that. bug. There was a big, <laughs> there, was a, there was a big, there was a big tall bugger from the Poms. And my, 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 my reaction would have been if I was an Aussie bloke, I would have given him a bit of stick. <laughs> and next time he might have jumped as high. Yeah, Murray, coming from Murray. 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 Yeah, what a surprise! As, um, no, well, mate, come on, our rugby union guys are not like that. Okay. But see, I'm talking about the, the way that Australia played. Both Tim Horan and Jason Little, who have got to be. Absolute number one, yep. uh, one uh, aims for the for the Super League or for the Rugby League talent scout. Have both come out this week and said they want to run the football, not tackle all day, and that's all they did. We didn't see either of those players, as brilliant as they are, run the football once in the game virtually. Very difficult, Doko. Bob's idea of this flat line attack is just, I mean, I've never seen it before until this year. It's a new concept he's run with, doesn't work. They shouldn't have played it, um, and that this World Cup uh, campaign has just proved that. So, you know, it's, it, it's time for a change, it's time for a new direction, new uh, players, new coach. Which players specifically are you talking about? Oh, well, Cam Bowen and, 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 and Michael Liner have both said that they'll, they'll probably you are. You are. <laughs> I think that there's, there's some of the players who, uh, who know they should give the game away. And, uh, Does that uh, signify the end of Campo, do you think? Well, I, I, you know, Campo's been a great player. He won the last World Cup for us. But there comes a time in every man's career that uh, you've got to give it up. I think that's a yes, Mars. Yes, yes. Now, speaking of rugby union, I've got to jump in here for a moment. Um, Mario, we know you play the game for the love of it, rugby league, and not for the money. <laughs> oh. And that's why you were afforded honorary um, membership tonight at South's Rugby Union. I can't understand how a rugby league bloke can get honorary membership to a Life rugby union. Well, to a rugby, I'll, explain. I'll, I'll explain it, and I'll do it slowly so you can understand. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. No. Well, what, what happened was they, they wrote me a letter and they and they said that they they liked the way I you know I do my best and I, I you know I uh, battle and and they felt that uh, I epitomised a lot of what their club represented. And it's obviously flattering for me, but I heard I heard they actually, had a raffle actually, and the, the winner had a choice and he took the meat train. Actually, Mario, that's <laughs> Mate, actually, if actually, you want if you want to undermine it, that's fine. No, no, I think it's great. I'm, Mario, I'm very grateful Mario. for the. Uh, it's a wrap for me, and I'm I'm, I'm grateful for it. Uh, it's a beautiful thing, but actually, what they were doing was they wrote Mario a letter and said. Mate, if the Crushers don't go to Super League, we'll have you. Well, that's right. Well, <laughs> you can't, Mary. You've got to play Rugby Union now because, you know, if the Crushers, particularly if the Crushers go to Super League, mate, you're without a club. The Crushers won't go to Super League, mate. The Crushers will go to ARL. I've told you that before. And oh. Mario, um, I think that you and I are probably brothers because there's a little bit something else that went on, mate, that we were privy to that I didn't realise that you were into singing like me. Did you sing? I roll out the barrel. <laughs> Very similar, because I've got no ability. Graham, we are Graham. Graham, Mario, Shirley. We're very similar, because I've got no ability on on the uh, things. I think so. We are. Yeah, similar. but I've got cred. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's. Well, we've got to move on here on the footy show, and uh, of course, the uh, talk in rugby league this week is on Sunday night. The Australian Test team to play New Zealand in a three-test series will be announced on Sunday night. The footy show have come up with their team, the one that they sh think should be selected on form out of the three state of origin matches. Oh, Davis, Wishart, Coyne, Moore, Dallas, Fittler, Lamb, Smith, Larson, Gilmeister, Harrigan, Bartram, Hone, Moore, Brasher, Pay and Florimo. I think we've got two blues in the starting 11. Spewing about that too. Yeah, yeah. And we put, a, we put a couple on the reserves bench just to keep them happy. There'll, well, there'll be plenty of people upset about it because I'm telling you what will happen. There'll be a lot more New South Wales people on that side than you think. Well, let's have a look at this side. Let's put up this side. Now, this is my mail. 
on Tuesday morning from a very, very good source is that that will be the Australian side, and in that Australian side are five Queenslanders only. So don't be surprised, folks, if that is... Don't be surprised if that is the Australian side, and I think from the ARL's point of view, if they do pick that side, it is the worst public relations gesture that they can make, bearing in mind that the first test is going to be played up here mm. on Friday week. We could go back to 1985 with that turmoil in New Zealand when the oh, Queensland... No. Yeah. No, we don't want that. Well, a lot of hate's been spoken about in the last few weeks, hasn't it? Well, the ARL have been kind enough to give us a giveaway, Cheryl. You've got details about that. Oh, have I? Yeah, yes. it must be on the screen. Yes, there it is, mate. Uh, these are the details. Uh, if I could read it. Gee, the print. Well, we got a budget for the size of type print we're using this week? <laughs> the ARL leather jacket and jersey. Oh, I've betted it a grand. At least that's in big print. Let's have a look at how you win it. There it is. Find that number. 0055 60228. Two winners selected at random. Thank you for the hand gesture. All right. How do you spell kangaroo? We say goodbye to one Sam, Sam Scott Young, and we welcome in another Sam, Mr Newman, after the break. Still to come, we preview the key clashes and announce the winner of our Qantas Play of the Week on the Footy Show. Thanks for rejoining us on the footy show and it's AFL time and of course no club matches this weekend because the AFL turn on their State of Origin series. On Saturday it's Victoria up against South Australia and a couple of bears in that South Australian team. That's happening at the MCG. Then on Sunday Western Australia take on the Allies. That's in Perth, 2.15 for that one and there's four bears involved in the Allies team. Of course, he had plenty to say about our State of Origin series. Now let's see what he's got to say about the Victorian State of Origin series. Please welcome Sam Newman from Melbourne. Hello, Bummer. So, Sam, what about these two matches over the weekend? Well, look, we're terribly excited about these. Uh, Victoria have uh, picked a cracker jack side there down here, Bummer. And, of course, of the hundred-odd people going around for the various State of Origin sides over the weekend, the Bears, I think, have got five in. So, uh, obviously, thought of in very high terms up there in Brisbane, the Brisbane Bears players. Now, Sam, uh, MCG on Saturday, but just an average crowd, probably, what, 80, 90,000, I suppose, but by Victorian standards, won't it? Well, probably 80, Shirl, and uh, they'll wander along just to uh, pay homage to the great game, of course. That's what State of Origin football's about, attracting a lot of people to There's the game. There's your chance, Mario. <laughs> That's your chance, mate. You want to make the bet? You want to make the wager? Come on. Well, why don't you make a wager? Let's see your body. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody want to see it, though? <laughs> How many do you think oh, we'll get there, Mario? Uh -huh, come oh, on. You oh, might get 20. Hey, listen. Oh? Why don't you bet Kevy? No, come on, oh. you blouse. <laughs> <laughs> We better set this straight because a couple of weeks ago uh, there was a bet between Mario and Sam about how many would attend the uh, State of Origin, the Rugby League one at the MCG. And Mario won that one and Sam had to remove the clothing. So come on, give come him on, a chance. Come on, come on, Mario. This is your chance. Uh, I reckon there'll be 80,000 there, Sam. 80,000? Oh. Well, if there's not 80,000, I want you to appear uh, without any clothing on the next week, all right? <laughs> Is that all right? There'll be 80,000 and more, mate. Oh, 80 or more? <laughs> yeah. All right then, Mario. Well, uh, if there's uh, not 80 or more, you remove the gear and what'll I do? Gee whiz. Oh, well, I can't do anything more, can I? <laughs> <laughs> take, take off your mohair jumpsuit, the on. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, getting back to the State of Origin uh, on Saturday, Tony Lockett and Gary Ablett both in the Victorian side. There was some uh, some concern that they wouldn't play. Are they go both going to play? Yes, they're both in. I'm checking the records. Plugger and God both in. And uh, <laughs> pretty uh, Gary Mate. Hawking's not in. He's known as the Buddha. Mate, uh, so <laughs> Buddha, God and Plugger. They'd be worth a few bob together, wouldn't they, Ablett and... Uh... Ablett and, and Lockett. Yes, a Plugger and Gary Ablett would be worth a fortune in relative terms down here. And uh, they are both playing. Uh, Plugger, this is the first time since the Boer War that uh, Plugger's put himself up for selection. He's always found an injury in recent weeks, in recent years, but he's actually playing this year. Sam, this sounds like there should be a couple of good games. When do they pick the Australian team? <laughs> well, uh... Well, Gary, we, uh, we 
do pick an All-Australian side, and of course that is very meritorious to be selected for the All-Australian side. Should be a good game, whoever they play. Because uh, you actually... <laughs> You actually play no one, so you don't have to go across the other side of the world and embarrass yourself by losing. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it is a very prestigious thing, Mario. You're familiar with the word prestigious? And, um, <laughs> incidentally, is that oh. your head or are you breaking it in for a squirrel? <laughs> you look shocking tonight, Mario. What do you look like tonight? I'm telling you <laughs> Hey, Sam, you're no, you're no brain surgeon, mate, I can tell you. <laughs> Sam, oh, you got it's getting too early. personal. <laughs> it's getting too personal. We got, I'm getting the wind-up signal. I've got no could more I, time left. Well, how, could I just say this? Mario well, apparently has been made an honorary South Queensland rugby union player. Yes. Is that right, Mario? That's it, mate. What's the difference between rugby union and league? Would you grunt a little harder? <laughs> you stick your head up the nether regions a little further? What is the idea of it? We don't wear hot pants, mate, I can tell you. And it says rugby union was built on tradition, loyalty, camaraderie and passion. I think you've struck out on all four, Mario. <laughs> Stop him! You've been drinking. You've been drinking. Hey. <laughs> What's that? Kenny, if you Bye, could just Sam. mail Bye, your blue print in. We're going to a break on the footy show. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> After the break, the panel preview the key clashes of round 12 next on the footy show. <laughs> Welcome back to the footy show. Nurse Payne has done a wonderful job reviving the cocky. In fact, she's not only revived him, she has converted him into a cane toad. <laughs> and as we say goodbye to Nurse Payne and the cocky come cane toad, time to talk about the forward to player of the week. And of course, with round 12 being a split round, we won't uh, get into that until the uh, end of this weekend. The votes have been held over until the end of round 12 this weekend. And of course, you at home will have the chance of winning this Ford Courier XL four-wheel drive crew cab valued at over $34,000. There isn't a more powerful one-tonner apart from me in its class. <laughs> round 12 uh, continues this weekend. Friday night, tomorrow night, it's St George against Newcastle at the Adelaide Oval. Our cameras will be there from 8.30pm. And Badge, this should be a pretty good game. Tough game here. I, I think maybe someone's trying to give St George a hint. This must be three or four years in a row they've played at, at Adelaide, so they should be used to the conditions down there. Wide open spaces. Adelaide Oval, I played down there a couple of seasons ago myself. We've actually beat them for the Raiders. Um, interesting for Newcastle. Oh, oh, good. Paul Harrigan. Yeah, I think this is one last chance for the Chief. He's been ordinary in the uh, State of Origin series. And as I said earlier, they should have picked a side on Tuesday night, on Monday night, but... They've given some players one last chance to push for test selections. He'll he might have a big the game. The Chief will get in. And as, as we said, uh, the Crushers are off to Tiger Town. They take on uh, the Tigers at Parramatta Stadium on Saturday. Uh, what about the new signing, Tony Kemp? Uh, what's yeah. the news on him, Mario? Yeah, he's fitting in very well. Uh, he's certainly a big, big player and he's got a lot of skill. And I think he'll be a great addition to the, to the side. He'll go well for us. Match of the day on Sunday is Norths up against Manly. And uh, that is at Brookvale Oval. Highlights... Uh, on uh, Nine's Wide World of Sports from 6.30pm on Sunday. And uh, Durko, again, this will be another one of the great matches of the round. Yeah, I think it will, but uh, a lot of talk about Mandy going through the season undefeated. I don't think that'll be uh, stopped on the weekend. I think they'll have far too many guns for North Sydney, particularly, particularly with uh, Tony Hearn out. They, they lose a lot of grunt up front with him. At, These with are the danger games, though, aren't they, Durko? Like, if well, it's fire... Yeah, it's I know, but mate, I, I can't see. Look, on form, Manly, Manly, I think, will be far too strong. And I think a lot of those Manly players who are going to be named in the test side will have a big one on Sunday. What about for you, Kevin? You've only just played uh, Norths and Manly, so what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think Manly will be too strong at home. They're very hard to beat, and they'll be, the fans will be hanging from the rafters down there at Brookie Oval. and Very hard to beat there, and if it's a bit rainy, it'll suit Manly as well. So, you know, I'm going for Manly. All right, we'll take a break on the footy show. Be back with all uh, the rest of the Round 12 games very, very shortly. Don't go away, you could be the winner of the Qantas Play of the Week competition next on The Footy Show. <laughs> Back to the footy show. Time now for results in the Qantas play of the week. And try D, Brett Dallas's 41%. 41%. <laughs> 
And uh, Trevor Noe of uh, North Mackay. Congratulations to Trevor. He's our winner. Congratulations to the Blues players too. They got 1% of the vote each. <laughs> Uh, now, the panel's progress table of our tipping so far. How did we go last weekend? Three out of four. 83 from 114. This week, we conclude round 12, the split round because of the state of origin. First up, St George and Newcastle. Mario? I'm tipping St George. I spoke to Brian Smith tonight on the phone. He wants to uh, finish the season on a high note. I think St George can beat Newcastle. Next one is the Western Reds against Souths. I'm going to go for the Western Reds, but they have employed uh, former Australian cricket captain Kim Hughes as their motivator, and uh, let's wish them all the best. <laughs> His special instructions are, don't cry after the game if we lose. They'll all resign in tears if they do lose, yes. The Tigers and the Crushers, Badge? I'm taking the Crushers. I think, as Mario said, Tony Kemp will add an extra dimension to their attack. All right. Norths and Manly, the match of the uh, round, uh, Durka? Yeah, as I said earlier, Manly, mate. I, I honestly believe they'll be far too strong for Norths, who just haven't fired this year at all. Auckland and Penrith. Auckland at home, Kevin. Oh, mate, can't go past Auckland at home, Ericsson Stadium. Oh, didn't go down too well with the audience. This one is going to be interesting. Graham Murray, you're in the spotlight. Brisbane at home at ANZ Stadium on Sunday against your old team, Illawarra. Well, over the last four or five years, it's always been... <laughs> Uh, tough games. Go with my heart, I'll stick with Illawarra. Oh. Oh. <laughs> no. So there it is from Graham Murray. He's going from Illawarra. From all of us here at the Footy Show, we've run out of time. Thanks to Graham Murray. Thanks to you at home for joining us. We'll see you again next week. with Jason Smith and he runs into a yawning gap. Oh, he's got the goat. Dallas is away. Look at him go. Another try for the red-headed flyer. More work for Matt Sears. Boy, he's made a mistake. Eisen, Eisen, he'll score. The youngster, he goes in the score. Queensland have won the series in a clean sweep and very